Hello, now we've got someone else in the house. Look at this. Yo. There he is. Gareth Prince, welcome to the what? Andy, thank you so much. Andy, we've, we've, Andy, we've got an overlap of note here, but stick okay. around if you want. Gareth, thank you so much for coming onto the show, brother. It's really good to see your face. Always a pleasure, Jules, always. Pleasure, brother. Okay. Mm. Good, on good, thanks. And how's it? And how's it been going um, in your part? Are you in? Uh, am I right in saying you're kind of in the Worcester area? No, I'm in uh, Simonstown, just uh -huh. uh, past Vision. Right. Okay. That's nice. All right. And you and you managed to you're with your family and you're in your home and you've been um, staying indoors just like the government told you to, yeah. <laughs> You know what, my life is a Rastafari, as as we pre prepared me for this whole bullshit that I've just gone down fake. So I've been taking it in my stride. And don't you think it's just really delicious about this whole story about the tobacco and alcohol scene and how it is with the tobacco and alcohol and how we have our rights as cannabis users? It must be doubly nice feeling for you, Gareth, after all the work you've put in. What goes around comes around, bro. You kind of can start to get a feeling of what we've been accustomed to for the past century. Away, away. <laughs> century is not even long enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, and have you been? Have you managed to be get, uh, gathering? Have you managed any gatherings anywhere online, Gareth, between you and the brothers? Well, not really, mate. I mean, like the, uh, you know, in our community, cats uh, on like they just like me, probably. We all a bunch of nutites when it comes to technology, you know. So we just keep we're keeping it cool, man. Just texting and whatever, you know. All right, because um, we were, Myrtle and I were trying to work it backwards. When was the last time we saw you in person? And it was literally. The last time we weren't locked down in South Africa, because it was in East London at a conference. I, I remember now. We we both we That's both correct. In East London it was, yeah. We both spoke in East London, and then two days later, Myrtle and I went to Europe. And three weeks after that, we quarantined ourselves. And two weeks after that, Cyril quarantined us for weeks. And so you were the the, the last time we met a human was you. And since then, we've either been overseas. Or in the jazz farm. Quite amazing how time flies. I read, I read you guys managed to get out of, out of Spain just in time, yeah? Yeah, I know. We were on the second last flight. And I, I can't imagine actually being there now for the last five weeks because it's 20 to 1 to the dollar now. You need to be exporting all of that green gold now, bro. So let me tell you, so, let me ask you something, Gareth. Um, just before Christmas, there was that horrible story in Worcester with the police and the elder, and he did, and he died oh, in police that custody. Actually, uh, that was Wellington, Jules. In Wellington, sorry, man, that's my that's my Wellington, yeah. that's my Gauteng thing, yeah, in Wellington. Tell me, is there any news about that family, or is there has there anything happened whatsoever about it? Nah, you know, I mean, like, as you would well know that. Uh, IPAD has been tasked with investigating that particular thing and you know with all the bullshit that's been going around and I mean like there's just been so many more cases during this lockdown of police brutality that that most probably is on the back burner you know it's still a hardcore level getting these people you know to hold them to any level of account because it would seem that our lives are just not worth it it is Oh, God, when you say it like that as a dull thud, when you just stop like that, it's right, mm -hmm. yeah, because it just doesn't matter to them, does it? That's, that's the bottom line with it all. They're so preoccupied yeah, with everything it else. It definitely man. seems so. Yeah, I know, you're absolutely... I mean, like, if we just look what has happened now here, you know, I, I like to reflect on the fact that South Africa stood first in line when the universe handed out paradox, and the paradox has actually been going down during for the past month, and it's just astounding, mate. But, you know, it's, it's, it's probably the storm before the car. You know, because <laughs> it's not just going to go down before the cannabis industry rise to its full potential. So in a strange way, you find that this whole bullshit is setting the stage for us 
to arise like the phoenix from the ashes, like. I like that. Yeah. Uh, no, lad, uh, talk dirty yeah. to me, brother. Talk yeah. dirty to me. That sounds about right to me. Uh, we we've had we've had some of these conversations in the last few weeks that they we're trying to angle some sort of common sense renaissance for the plant because um, there's so many um, there's so many things happening that, that cannabis could fit into. And Tony was on the program. Tony was on the show about a month ago. And he was discussing just seed, just the potential of seed for food. Because soon people people are already hungry, and it's only five weeks of lockdown. So what's it going to be like in a few months' time? So Myrtles and the crew have got the and Tony and Nick, who was on the show last week. We kind of got this plan formulating about an open letter to the president to say, literally, what the fuck? You have to cut to the chase now. We need you need our help, President. You need us to rebuild this. Have you got any thoughts about that, Gareth? Do you want to join the tribe and march with a mask and, and a meter and a half between us all to Parliament? <laughs> you know, I'll definitely on that. But seed is the future. You know that is what we need to understand. And what Parliament have shown now that you know we can take drastic measures. If we come together and if the need is there, we can do it. So, you know, this bullshit about it having to go through all of these bureaucratic angles, that's just what it is. It's pure bullshit. Seed. We need to get seed into the ground. We can't miss another planting season. And even though we have until September, they need to start putting those things in motion right now. Damn it, man. So, um... We're, uh, we'll, we will we will be dragging their feet until the last minute. It's urgent. Exactly. You know, I'm mean, going that. You know, I'm mean, gonna this whole situation, like I've said. You know, to a, it's been devastating, but it was indeed necessary. You know, there are times when, when we as as a species, you know, for too long, we've just been thinking that we are invincible. And how ironic it is that, that this small, invincible species have brought us to our knees. And we have to accept that there is a need for a new paradigm. And it has to be green if it's going to be sustainable, you know? And the fucking solution is right in front of us. So, have you gotten it? <coughs> so, let me ask you, Gareth, have you got an opinion about, um, about the way our government seems to be handling it with army and police and rules and curfews and jackboots <coughs> and threats and they're not actually handing out masks and telling everybody about nutrition and a balanced diet they're doing it a totally different way do you see much of that in your part of the world is there quite a heavy heavy presence going on Fuck yeah <laughs> Cape Town has been a military state for months before the lockdown you know what i'm saying and that has just simply Increase. I mean, like we've seen countless uh, incidents on, on on the news and in the media of police, ill-disciplined, poorly trained police having to deal with this whole situation. And man, they've made a royal balls up of this whole thing. You know, so the military-industrial complex is slowly, slowly trying, you know, to get a footing into our lives. But indeed, I think civil society. Is gonna is gonna rise up from this whole thing, mate. And cannabis is, is definitely going to lead the way. You know, I mean, we we simply need to refuse. But then you ask yourself, I'm like, how do we go about this now? You know, we're all fucking locked inside. I'm gonna on this false paradise. But you know, seeds grow in silence, whereas trees fall with a bang. <laughs> oh, no, I like that one. But buzz, right? That one. Buzz, write that one into your next blog post. That's a great one. Seeds grow in silence. It is. It really is. True story. Yo, man. No, but that good news for you guys. I mean, like, you know, that's trying to uh, keep the issue uh, uh, in the spotlight out there, you know, because there's, there's just so much need to conscientize folks. You know, people need to understand that we've been lied to for the past 100 years, you know, and what was considered normal was atrocious, you know, and and this whole scenario 
has just demonstrated that very aptly to most people that these fuckers don't know what they're doing or how to respond to crises. And we are saying the solution is simple. If you're talking about wanting to protect your nation, start with protecting their immunes. Start with protecting kids at school. So within the national, uh, there's, there's this national program that's to do with uh, school feeding. And that is where cannabis needs to fit in. We need to start giving cannabis seed cakes, hemp seed oil, to kids at school all over this country. Exactly. That is what we need to do, and that is where the cannabis community is willing to offer their assistance yes. to this government. Let us walk hand in hand in making this thing work, because we've got it right here within our hands, and we would be dumbasses if we are going to look this deep towards in the mouth. Well, um, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we've got your support all the way on that one, Gareth. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a big push on our petition uh, to try and get it up to forty thousand because we're gonna need them very very soon. Yes, you can put people home. Indeed. They're clothes, you know, but this whole thing, Joseph, I don't think that this is something is like this. We have an opportunity now where we can do it right from the start. You know, but it's it's no use that we are going to cowardly embrace. A hard truth. You know, we need to accept the reality that Dacha is what's going to make South Africa work. Stop this bullshit about us having to import seed when we have the potential to be a major, the major seed producer in the world. Let us start growing seed, man. Let us start extracting the oil. Let us start feeding the kids. Let us start healing the nation. Cannabis for the healing of the nation, bro. That's it. That's it. Exactly what it is. Now, let, me let me ask you another question um, from around the country, uh, Gareth. So, uh, last week we asked the question on the poll what it was like with prices. Uh, has the price gone up? Has it stayed the same? Or has it gone down because it's harvest time? And I think 60% of the people who voted said the prices started going up. I think that was the thing last week. 60% of the people, the price had gone up. What's it like in your part of the world for the price of ganja with this latest harvest being in the mix, but with all the cops and the lockdown and everything else? You know, prices have gone down. Down. I mean, I got my side most definitely, you know, because, because of all this time. And people that have been, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of people in this country that sell cannabis, even though they're illegal. You know, they sell it. And... They've been saying that your sales have become more difficult because it's quite understandably folks got ganja, they got their own. You know, but prices in Cape Town made is coming down. Interesting stuff, eh? Is that why it, that's why that's kinda of why we did it. So kinda of why we did it, just so the prices would drop, because the prices have been crazy. And it's so super cool to know that there are loads of people out there growing their own weed for a time like this. Yo, mate. I mean, the fact that I've had plants, the fact that I could be with my babies, you know, see them through to the end, dry them, trim them. On 420, I harvested my first plant, man. I was so oh. sick. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even plan it like that. I harvested my first batch. They've been dry, and fuck, I am well pleased, man. <laughs> it's brilliant. So what have you got? Those oats have been good to me. I can't complain, mate. Yeah, look, I'm sure, Gary, you know... I harvested my first one, my first harvest ever this year, so... She's in cure. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing now. They're giving them the cure. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right there, Ras Warren. Respect to the elder Gareth, more fire. No, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what I think. I see Krithi Thabers on the thread as well. Krithi, good to see you, matey. Haven't seen you on the thread for a while. Welcome from Durban. Yeah, um, hey, how's it going, bro? Um, All right. Yo, kudos to that, to that video we just did, mate. Powerful stuff, man. I hope the powers that be see that shit. Which one? Well, let's hope so. Now, Chris, just did a video now that I've actually doing around on WhatsApp. Oh, okay. Nice compilation. Uh, I'm going to go on what cannabis can do post-COVID-19. Oh, um, okay. So